Well, we're back here at the uh, Cave of Science looking at part two of the weather and climate the meteorology uh, review. I guess for the retest. All right. The relative humidity one was our, uh, our sling psychrometer. And uh, the answer was really given right in, right in the, uh, the reading of the axis here. So along the x-axis, which is right across the tops, the difference between a wet bulb and a dry bulb. Dry bulb minus wet bulb. So we have a dry bulb of 22, a wet bulb of 17. So we have a difference of 5 degrees. So we have that. Along the y-axis is nothing more than the dry bulb temperature, which was 22. Find the intersection point, and we come with a relative humidity of 60%. And again, make sure you put your answers in complete sentences. You can use any values you want. Just make sure your dry bulb temperature is higher than the wet bulb. Remember the wet bulb, as you spun it, the water evaporated, so it was pulling air from the surroundings, so therefore the temperature is going to be lower on the wet bulb side. This was temperature controls here. Make sure you go over those. Uh, very simply here, Seattle is closer to the water than Spokane, and we know large bodies of water will moderate the temperatures. Uh, one interesting fact, uh, if we're in a mountain, especially large mountains, if you're on the windward side, they're typically cooler and more humid than the leeward side. Because on the leeward side, we know the air compresses. So if the air is compressing, the temperature is going to go up. And we also have that rain shadow, and it's going to be drier there. So make sure you check out your temperature controls. Uh, question three, lake effects no less prevalent when it's frozen over. While the lake is frozen, there is no water to evaporate. If you want maximum lake effect snow, you don't want any ice cover. The greater the surface area, the more water is going to evaporate, and as it moves over land, then it will have a chance to condense. Here is our, let's see if I can back out of this a touch. Yeah, I guess this, well, let's see if we can go up one more. <clears throat> I guess we can go through this. This is our, uh, our 80 back lapse rate. And we're starting at sea level at 21 degrees. Condensation level is at 600 meters. And we know we lose, we got to use the dry rate, one degree per 100 meters or 10 per thousand. So we, uh, we went from zero to 600. So at 600 meters, uh, six, so that ends up being six degrees. Again, temperature decreases as you go up a mountain. So 21 minus 6 is 15, <clears throat> excuse me. From here, from 600 to the 2400 meter altitude, we use the wet adiabatic worry, which is a half a degree Celsius per 100 or five per thousand. So we need to know the di difference in distance. So 2400 to 600 is 1800 meters. Uh, so 18 times 0.5 is nine degrees. And so 15 minus nine is six degrees. On the flip side, we're going downhill and we want the uh, temperature on the leeward side at the 600. So we're going from 2400 to 600, which again is a difference of 1800 meters. On the leeward side, you use the dry rate. So 1800 meters and it's at one degree Celsius per hundred or 10 per thousand. That ends up being 18 degrees Celsius. So six plus 18 is 24. And notice we gained, we went from 15 degrees on the windward side to 24 on the leeward side. That's why we get that whole idea of the rain shadow. If you remember the, uh, the video uh, I did from uh, Colorado. The next problem is our skew T diagram. A couple things to keep in mind here. The dotted line is going to be the dew point, which is always going to be to the left of the air temperature. And when they're very, very close together, you've got a great chance of precipitation, clouds, and, they're in, and storms, if you will. As they move apart, you got less chance. And so in this area here, you've got a good chance for precipitation because they're close. The other question, what pressure level do the dew point and pressure plots diverge? Well, remember, this is pressure, so pressure is closer to ground. And so 
Many of you have read it in reverse, but it's 600 to 700. And so it's about 630 for this point here, $630 million. The next question uh, was our station model data. And let's say we most likely have precipitation. Uh, fairly obvious, the one with the greatest cloud cover. And a couple other reasons was dew, or excuse me, temperature and dew point very close together. It follows right along with our skew T. And also it has the lowest air pressure. If we follow our rules for air pressure, it's 999.8. And that's the lowest of them all. Likewise, if you wanted to know which one's got the least chance, well, you would guess Niagara Falls, no cloud cover. Uh, between temperature and dew point, the largest difference, and it's also the highest pressure at uh, 1020.1. In high pressure, you don't get clouds. And again, I go back, you know, this is our reading of a uh, station model. The next question. Uh, the amount of sunshine sends energy to any place on Earth really depends on time of the year or the month and the latitude you are. So the answer was right in the graph itself. Interesting to note, the equator stays pretty consistent throughout the year because it gets pretty direct sunshine all 12 months of the year. Uh, the North Pole, on the other hand, gets no sunshine January, February, looks like parts of October, November, and December. And again, we're tilt, the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, and the sunlight cannot strike uh, the polar regions here. The next question was our one on uh, our uh, global pressure systems and our global winds. We know the equatorial regions are low pressure with the rainforest, high pressure at 30 degrees north, which is our world's deserts. Then we had that other low pressure at 60, and then a high pressure at the equatorial regions. Uh, the climatic conditions, the rainforest jungles at the equator, and the deserts at the 30 degree. Uh, we talked many times about the Midwest part, or you know, the United States being the middle latitudes between 30 and 60, so we're in the prevailing southwesterlies, and that is why our storm track is from the southwest to the northeast. The curving of these winds, Earth's rotation, the Coriolis effect. Everything shifted to the right in the northern and shifted to the left in the southern. We talked about the uh, hurricanes. They're moved from west to the west coast of Africa across the Caribbean. And again, it's that whole idea that it gets caught in the northeast trades. And so that pushes them over. And so that's the, uh, make sure you can recognize those facts there. I think this is our last one. Yep. This is our meteogram. And as we read this, we see dew point, the dotted line, and temperature at the south line fairly close together. So you would expect some clouds. But all of a sudden, we got thunderstorms. And notice the significant temperature drop. If you got a significant temperature drop, that's a cold front coming through. Again, cold air pushes out this warmer air. And behind it is colder air. And typically, it's going to be drier. And that's why you see the greater distance between dew point and uh, the air temperature. All right, that's the review for number two, and uh, we'll catch you later.